Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a Photoshop tutorial and we're going to be sharpening this image using only Photoshop. Now if you guys do enjoy this video, it'd be great if you could smash the thumbs up and also subscribe. Uh, if you want to check out some of our other videos, it'd be really useful for you guys. So if you want to check out any of our other videos, if you guys use Lightroom to color grade or Photoshop, we're going to be bringing out a lot more Photoshop videos. So go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more like that and if this video was useful to you. So before we go ahead, I'm just going to tell you we're going to be creating a Photoshop sharpen action uh, and that will be free for you to download. I will leave the link download in the description where you can go check it out. Um, if you go onto our website, that's mattandseb.com, uh, you can see we've got a load of stuff going on here. Uh, and you can come out of Photoshop and Actions and all of our Photoshop actions will be listed here. And um, there are a couple at the moment you can go ahead and check out while you're on our website. But without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so this is the image we're going to be using. Um, and to be honest with you, if you're going to sharpen your image on Photoshop, it's actually pretty easy to do. Um, there aren't too many steps, but I'm going to go ahead, as I said, and create an action just to make that slightly simpler for you. So once you've imported your image into Photoshop, you want to come over and you can either control click and duplicate your layer. Alternatively, press Command J or Control J, depending on what computer you're on, to duplicate your layer here. Then what we're going to do is the idea is we're going to reduce the saturation of this image just to make it completely black and white. Now there are a few shortcuts you can do there. Um, if you press, now there are a few shortcuts you can use. If you press Shift Command U, it will go ahead and make it completely black and white to start off with in one quick go. Alternatively, you can just press Command U on your keyboard and drag down the saturation slider to minus 100%. And there you go, we have it, we have a desaturated layer on top. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to get that current layer and you want to come up to uh, Filter, scroll down to Other and select High Pass. Um, once you've done that, uh, you want to basically choose, you can see here if I zoom out, it's kind of showing the image with a few outlines in white. Um, usually you can see it here as well, for some reason it's not showing up, but you can see it in this small preview here. Um, if you move the radius slider up a lot more, you can see, you can actually notice more of the image. The idea here is all we're doing is we're trying to make sure that the outlines, i.e. these sort of white bits here and around the eyes are the ones that you can see and you can't see anything else that's all greyed out. So in this case, three pixels works quite well, so I'm going to go ahead and choose that and we're just going to go ahead and select OK. Then what we're going to do is come to the blending options here. Ah, that's why it wasn't showing. It needs to be on normal so you can see it like that. So again, if I come up to filter, other uh, and high pass, you can then see it here. So if I then click up more, you can actually see it updating here. So we're going to go ahead and stick with three like I said. Uh, then we're going to come to blending options and we're going to scroll down straight away and click on overlay. Now already, if I turn off that layer, and turn it on again, you can really see a difference, especially if you just look here around the eyes. I'll zoom in just to make it easier for you guys to notice. Uh, but you can really see a difference with how sharp this image is. Now this image has been shot at a wide aperture, so something like f2.8, maybe f4, something like that, which means that the uh, depth of field is quite shallow, which means that, the, for example, here the eyes aren't perfectly in focus, but unfortunately the photographer got the hair in focus. So here we're trying to make sure that the eyes are the focal point of the image, um, which is very useful in portrait photography because that is really where your eyes are drawn to in the image. So if we turn back on that layer, you can see that the eyes are now a lot more focused and that is really uh, where our eyes are looking. Um, you can also see that the hair does become a lot more contrasty and in higher clarity uh, as well. So you've got two choices. One, we can either leave it like that, which to be honest seems to be kind of fine as is. You don't really want to mess around too much with the sharpness. You don't want to make it any sharper. But what you could do is come down here and create a mask layer and then press B on your keyboard to select brush or alternatively click here. And we're going to increase the brush size by pressing close square brackets. And then what you can do is just paint with black as your foreground color just to remove areas that you don't want to be sharpened. Um, here I've got my brush on, I'm going to put it on 100%, make sure your hardness is somewhere around zero. And if you just paint, you can see that no longer these bits are being sharpened. Uh, one thing that's really useful to do is if you've got a background that's also blurred like this, you want to make sure that you are removing um, the sharpening on there as well. So just go ahead and very lightly paint. It doesn't have to be too accurate, but just paint away the background. We don't want to be sharpening. Sh we don't want to be sharpening anything that's been blurred, um, just because it kind of defeats the purpose of shooting in a low aperture. It kind of tends to look a bit weird if you try to sharpen anything that blurred. So if I just turn that off and on again, you can see the before and the after, and it's really just affecting the face and the chest area there. 
that's off and that is on again. Now one thing you can do once you've done that is you can add a, another layer just to kind of warm it up a bit and mess around a little bit more which we're going to go ahead and do and as I say all of this will be in the Photoshop action you guys can just go ahead and download and just use it on all of your photos and what you'll be able to do is I'll demonstrate in a second but you'll be able to choose the high pass uh, pixel radius for your image so it works best for your image. But all I've done there is gone ahead and created a new layer. I've selected the uh, marquee tool. You can press M on your keyboard as a shortcut. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is press Shift Delete. And that's going to allow us to pull a color and just select a color there for um, the fill. So we come down to um, color. It's then going to bring up here. And we're just going to select this color here. Now, if you want to copy, copy the hex code there, you can go ahead and use the exact same color if you want. Um, all I'm doing is choosing a color because this photo was taken in the evening. And I just want to warm up the image a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and select OK there and OK there. Um, and now what you can see is uh, that's completely covered the image and we can't see anything there. So you want to come up, you want to come to the blending options and you want to scroll down to something like soft light where it then allows that color to bleed through onto the image below. Now obviously this looks really weird um, and really orange and oversaturated so we don't want anything like that. We want to just sort of sort this out and lower the opacity and saturation there. So if you come up to the opacity, drag that down to about 22%. Around there is quite good. If I turn that off and on again, you can see it just warms up the skin tone there. So that is it guys, there's really not a lot more to say how to sharpen your image. You can if you want to come down to your bottom layer just to sharpen it a bit more. Press Shift Command A to open Camera Raw. Alternatively you can come up to Filter and open Camera Raw and open Camera Raw that way. Um, but all that does is bring up this editor, much like in Adobe Lightroom. And if you come over to these two triangles here, that's Detail, you can select Detail, and you can also increase the sharpening here as well. I wouldn't go much higher than 40%. Um, 25 is usually a good bet to go for. And then just select OK, and just wait for that to apply to your image as well. So if I press Command Z, you can see it's made a slight difference, but it's not very uh, noticeable now we've done this high pass correction. But there you go, guys. I hope you did enjoy that. That will be put into a uh, Photoshop action, which I'm going to demonstrate for you now. Um, if I just go ahead and reset the image back to what we had, come over to actions. Now, this action will be called sharpen. Um, you can see here we've got some other actions. This is the Brandon Murphy preset pack, which is on the website if you want to check it out. Um, but sharpen, you can click play. And all it's going to do is follow all of those things there uh, and brings up this high pass uh, little tool here. You can put in your radius that you want dependent on your image. Um, I'm going to stick with three, select OK, and it's just going to go ahead and finish what we had already done. And you can see here you can go in and you can adjust it more if you want to. But that is it, guys. I hope you did enjoy this video. I hope you guys do enjoy the free download and go check out our website while you're over there. But we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Live long and prosper.